home of one of Michigan's earliest automakers and the truck capital of Michigan. In January 1911, Frank Ruggles drove down Superior Street in his little red self-made delivery wagon. That little truck marked the beginning of a company that would lead Alma to be the fastest growing town in the state. The Republic Motor Truck Company would go from humble and small beginnings to the world's largest exclusive truck manufacturer, renowned for their truck's performance. In mid-1913, Ruggles adopted the name Republic, reflective of a patriotic trend happening in the country at the time. The company printed out advertisements with great claims and in magazines such as the Commercial Car Journal. Soon thereafter, orders of Republic trucks surged. Their advertising success was unlike any other. One testimonial attributes a man who drove his Republic from Alma to Los Angeles, family and luggage included. When it was labeled as a one-ton wagon, it would always pull two. That's quite the selling point for a truck. At the factory on the St. Louis Alma Road is where Republic would manufacture its first trucks. The parts were delivered directly to the factory by train. After the first full year of the company's existence in 1914, the company had made a profit of $16,000. A truck locally owned by Swift & Company, a poultry producer next to the Republic plant, drove their truck 14,000 miles and the repair bill didn't exceed more than $1.50. This is simply amazing for an early work truck. Historian Dave McMacken states that Alma was the fastest growing city in the state, regarded as a miracle city. They were the largest exclusive manufacturer of trucks in the world within three years. Republic's reputation swiftly grew, prompting expansion of their plants in Alma and dealerships across the nation. Soon, trucks were being bought in Honolulu and Melbourne, Australia. Sarah Lancashire, daughter of Omniwright, founder of Alma College, sold the adjoining acreage and sugar factory to the Republic Motor Truck Company to allow for their expansion. With the three new factories built to meet growing demands, Michigan Avenue was never silent from the sound of a roaring engine, clanging hammers. One out of every nine trucks on the road was a republic. Honestly built, honestly priced, became the company's slogan. The company's growing fame began attracting visitors to the city of Alma. Visitors were eager to note that the success of Republic boosted the entire town. Republic had ignited a spark in the town of Alma. Between 1910 and 1914, Alma's population increased 59%. As everyone flocked to work for Republic, Alma's infrastructure struggled to keep up but Republic kept on producing more and more models of Republic trucks. Republic produced all sorts of vehicles, like a tractor, a bus, a rail truck for use at their factory. From 1914 to 1916, Alma's population nearly doubled again. The company grew so fast, the town could not keep up with it in terms of housing and schooling. Classes were being held in churches and in city hall. By 1916, the European war began influencing the Republic company where workers began working overtime to meet the growing demands from buyers. Due to the population boom, workers were forced to be boarded in homes in St. Louis, Elwell, and Ithaca. These places, being just barely too far for a comfortable walk, the workers had to hitch rides from other men who commuted or rode the company motor bus which traveled morning and night. Then, in 1917, the country went to war. When the U.S. entered World War I, they knew they needed to have a standardized truck that everyone could do maintenance on. So private truck companies made the Liberty truck. They were hard to drive, two men to a truck, and they drove all 40 all the way to Baltimore to be loaded on a ship and sent to France. The sendaways in Alma were an important event, almost like a homecoming parade. At one point during this time, the Republic Company even had their own band that traveled by truck and a semi-pro baseball team that they sponsored. This gave Alma a prideful feeling and a real tangible connection to World War I. The success of the company led to Alma's flourishing economy throughout World War I, until it all came crashing down and forgotten. Post-war depression was sharp, and they went from 17,000 trucks a year at peak down to 4,000. A lot of the trucks produced by Republic after 1920 used a wide range of parts, such as the airplane engine, 
in this 1928 Republic, one of the final models. There are still a lot of pieces of the company that float around the country and world in forms of ads, old cars and barns, and old metal signs. Without the Republic Company, it's hard to see where the town of Alma would be today, as well as the trucking industry as a whole, whose many early endeavors and creations are thanks to the Republic Motor Truck Company. In Alma, most of the remnants remain as whispers and memories of what Republic once was, but it remains incredibly important with the old factories on Michigan Avenue now being used by Avalon and Tahoe boats. The old Republic School still remains on Republic Avenue. The public truck restorer, often regarded as Mr. Republic, Joe Butcher collects and restores Republic trucks in Alma, Michigan. Hey, I'm Joe Butcher. Um, I'm a local farmer in Alma, born and raised here, and I collect and play with Republic trucks, I guess, best way to put me. Um, I got a dozen trucks, I guess. There's three of them in here. I got um, six of them run and drive. And uh, some of them I call our farm fresh, and some of them, like this one's been completely restored. And then I have a Republic tractor, which is only two of those in the United States. So that was a tough find there. But uh, that's it. Just uh, play the noise, I guess. Hobbled into the local Walgreens to get some pain medication. And when I did, I was looking for something to read. There was a book on the counter um, down through the decades by Dave McMacken, which I didn't know Dave McMacken. He was a school teacher, but I didn't I didn't know him. I went to school there, but um, anyways, I read through the book. Some of the stuff I knew about, but Republic Truck just caught my eye. I mean, how could I not know about this? I grew up and raised here. I was born and raised here. They made 80,000 trucks here, employed 2,000 people, and I didn't know anything about it. So I just, I kind of went nuts on it. I was like, man, I got to find a truck. So I drove around, I found a few people that have had trucks. So anyways, I finally found this truck on eBay, and uh, my son was 10 years old or so at the time. We drove clear across the United States and picked this truck up, which does not look like this. I actually found it in a scrapyard. They were gonna scrap it. And uh, we brought it home and got it running. It was a project for my son and I to do. So when people research in Republic, they look me up, I guess, which I don't know anything. I'm just a local farmer that likes to play with toys and I, Done history, I got all kinds of memorabilia that I've found or picked up or bought or people have given me or whatever. And I'm not a rich man to go out and buy every one of them, but I sure buy a few and I like to play with them and fix them. Just wish I had a little more time to, to do them. I've got more in the works to do too. Hobby, it's a, it's a legacy, I guess. I mean, they, they built this town. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing here when Republic truck come here. And then they, there was people living in tents here, you know, uh, lined up for a job. I mean, they had 2,000 people working here, you know, that's incredible, I think. But, um, I mean, Republic Truck's still kind of in business, I guess. It, when it, the Roaring Twenties took it out, basically, the Great Depression, and uh, they were moved to um, Ohio and become LaFrance, which was huge in the fire truck business. So the bloodline's still there, and then it went to, uh, I want to say, like, White, White and Volvo and GMC. So it kind of revolved into, it was bought by the companies over the years. So it's kind of still alive, you know, but it all started right here. Um, these, all these trucks have Torbus and rear ends into them, which come from Muskegon, Michigan, which were owned by Republic Motor Truck Company, which when Republic filed for bankruptcy or fellowship, I think they called it in 1929, that rear end, they sold it to Eaton, which is in every semi truck on the road today. It's amazing. It's a, that's why I almost here, I guess. It's just an, an important thing, I think, to... You know, I'd like to see maybe this truck here sitting in the library eventually, you know, and this truck right here, my son and I and my daughters, we all restored this truck together and it was, you know, that's the problem with this country, this day and age, we have a lot of that. He can be thanked for keeping the Republic heartbeat alive. Republic once created families here in mid-Michigan and provided loads of wealth to the town of Alma. Today, Memories of Republic still provide a thrilling insight on the past and how this town was able to flourish. Like the families of the past, Republic still brings families together today, like Joe Butcher and his son, who have restored six of their 12 Republic trucks to a running condition. Historian Dave McMacken describes this as a flash and fizzle. Alma had something so significant and special on the world stage. 
for it to fizzle out and become nothing but nostalgia is really a message that great things should be cherished while they last. <laughs>